yesterday we have discussed uh, a simple servlet where we had uh, a login html page where we had a pop with username password fields and submit button and the form action uh, corresponds to some url pattern okay and the method was post and mm, first of all when a specific string is there in the action of a form what happens is uh, first of all it will search okay, uh, the browser or uh, the tomcat server whatever the server we have deployed the application the server will search for a static web resource with this url pattern a static web resource with this url pattern is not found then what the server will do means it will search for a dynamic web resource configured in the web.xml okay something hello.login okay this url pattern <coughs> is matching with this hello.login since this url pattern is matching with the hello.login so the control will go to this servlet name okay and again the server will try to fetch the servlet which is configured with this name login servlet then it will go to the login servlet and it will go to the service method of the login servlet service method of the login servlet is in executable okay that's how the flow of servlets will be okay let's consider like if i give <coughs> hello dot do what happens then file will not be identified mm, then what happens for not for for not for exception okay. just because uh, there is no static web resource with this url pattern as well as even in the web.xml also there is no url pattern configured with this pattern dot do so what happens means for not for exception will be raised let me try to start the servers This I'm going to start the server. I started the server, and uh, let me try to execute this application with just the HTML. Let me try to submit the form. It's telling that this is a format for exception just because the resource is not the URL pattern doesn't have any match. Okay, so we should give a correct URL pattern. It is matching with us. So just let me try to refresh this. And do submit this. So it is going there. Okay. And you see here, it's giving inside the login servlet where the servlet service method is being executed. Okay. But there is nothing displayed in the browser just because in the servlet, in the servlet code, we did not write anything. We just this is not Okay. From the servlet, how we can print some content on the browser okay means the response object itself will have some information where we can capture the browser okay response.getWriter method will return 
a reference to the browser okay response dot get either we will return the a reference to the browser that means uh, whatever that we write using response dot get either that will be written on the browser that means um, that will be like a logical reference to the browser okay response dot get writer method will return a object of type print writer print writer is a class in java dot package print writer is a class in java dot package okay the response dot get writer method the response object is there okay service method is called by sending request and response object the response object itself has a method which gives the reference to the browser that is the response object which gives you the print writer object okay using this print writer object using this print writer object this I am printing okay now uh, since I have changed the select class okay we want to reflect these changes what I need to do is I need to recompile the application and restart the server then only the re uh, changes will be reflected I have changed the select code and I will try to submit are my changes reflected? no so if you want to make these changes reflected what I need to do is I need to recompile the application and then restart the server. Then only, just because the content, the select content is present in web binary. See, the select code or the select related dot class files will be there in classes folder. So, in uh, the classes folder is there in web binary. So, in web binary, whatever the content it might be, the changes will be reflected only on a server register ok so what we do is we go to the ok let me compile the application compiled so let me restart the server so that the changes will be reflected ok server is started now let me try to refresh the browser and you get the changes reflected ok this content is from login server. This is printed on the browser. So whatever the content that we want to print on the response page, okay, we can print that from the server using out dot print element like this. Okay, understand? That's how it will be. That's how the uh, response object can be used, okay, to print some content on the browser from the server. Okay, response object will have a method get writer which will return a reference to the browser, okay, which is of type print writer, okay, whatever the content that we print using the print writer object, out is the name of the reference and it is of type print writer, okay, using out whatever we print, okay, that will go to the browser, okay, that's how it will be. 
No. Let me go to the test.html. Here I am giving username and password and I am clicking on submit. Okay. Uh, let's consider that I want to capture what is the username and what is the password that I have entered. Then how I can capture those values? Okay. I have entered username and password. Okay. And how when uh, how can I capture those values? Okay. And what is the method of form submission that we are doing now? It's post. Okay. If you use get, what happens? then the request parameters will go in the form of a query string so now we did not send any request parameters so go try to refresh the page again submit here okay. username equal to the blank and password is equal to okay so either we fill the values or not okay. the request parameters will go to the server but they will go as blank okay if you fill the fields then the specific values will go as a request parameter if you don't fill the fields then the blank value will go as a request parameter understood so we can use either get or post so if you fill the values then those values will do as the request parameter. Username equal to register and password equal to register. Understood? Then how we can capture those values okay in a satellite. Okay? In order to capture the request parameters in a satellite. Okay. There is a request object. <coughs> the request object contains the request parameters that are sent from the client. Client for any web application the client is browser from the browser we'll send some request parameters okay that request parameters can be captured in a uh, server how the request parameters can be captured means using the request object in the request object there is a method named just let me give a break here See, whatever the content that we write in output println, that will go to the browser. Okay. So, this is something like a HTML code that we are writing here. request dot get parameter okay in the request object there is a method named get parameter okay which will take a string and which will return a string okay request dot get parameter method will take a string as well as will return a string which what what is the string that will that it will take as input means okay request dot get parameter method will take the request parameter name as a string and what it will return means it will return the request parameter value as a string okay so i'll give username and the same way i'll give you in password also okay like this what is the request parameter name here it is password okay see the input file name will become the request parameter name okay the checkbox name 
or the radio button name whatever the name of the html component it might be that name of the html component will become the request parameter name okay here the name of the request parameter the name of the html component is name of this input field is username and the name of the <coughs> password field is password so this names will become the request parameter names okay and the values can be retrieved using request dot get parameter of the request parameter name and the values will be fetched in from a system and one more thing is the browser to server interaction will be in the form of a string only let's consider like integer is there even integer let's consider like i'll give uh, some 22 here even 22 will go into the server as a string only from the browser only strings can be sent browser cannot differentiate strings and integers and uh, uh, some other data types okay for browser all the uh, all the values all the characters are strings only okay once the information is sent to the server here the servlet okay once the information is sent to the server is the responsibility of the servlet or the corresponding server code to convert that string into a specific data type if i sense 22.44 22.44 will sent as a will be sent as a string to the servlet okay in the servlet what we need to do we need to convert that 22.44 which is a string into corresponding double value okay what we need to do is in the servlet we need to convert this 22.44 which is a string we need to convert this 22.44 which is a string into corresponding double value then how we can convert this a string into corresponding double value corresponding using a wrapper class okay using a wrapper class okay we can convert into a corresponding double value so like that we need to do okay and so what is the importance of wrapper uh, classes okay just because from the browser any content will come as a string in the server code in the corresponding servlet code we need to convert that string into corresponding wrapper class values okay then what is the username that i sent out i'll uh, copy this just i'm printing in the next page password So what here? Okay. So just I am printing. I am getting the username and password, and I am printing in the next page of the browser. Okay. And let me give a break here. Okay. So that it will be displayed in the next slide. So since I have changed the servlet code, let me stop the server. Let me compile the application again. Let me restart the server. Server is started. Okay. So, do you want to test the HTML? Let me refresh the page. Let me enter. Okay, username and password. And if I click on submit, username entered by you is Sharath, and password entered by you is Sharath. Okay, that's how it will be. While break is displayed. By default, um, outdoor printer will print the content in the next line. We need not to, I think, yes, it's correct. We need not to give a break again. 
explicitly. We need to give a break explicitly. Auto print line will print the content in the next line by default. Test. Test will be correct. So, this username entered by you is test, password entered by you is test one. So, this is how we can capture the values. Okay? And one more important thing that we discuss is whatever the value that we send, whether it is integer value or a string value or special characters, whatever the values that we send from the browser to the server, from the browser to the server, they will go only as a string. There is no other data type um, for the browser. But on the server side, that string values should be converted into corresponding primitive data types. Okay? Using wrapper classes. That's how we'll, we'll do. Okay? Hmm. Let's consider that Knowingly or unknowingly, I have two username fields. Two fields I'll give some other field. Knowingly or unknowingly I have done this. I have given two I have given two fields with the same name. I have given two fields with the same name. Okay? Then what happens? Okay, let us see. I have given two fields with the same name. Okay. Whatever the elements it might be, it might be a, a text box or a checkbox or a radio button, whatever it might be. I have given two fields with the same name. Now I am giving values. Test. Set up. 1, 2, 3. Password is 1, 2, 3. So, if I send these values, what are the values that are passed to the server? See the URL. If you see the URL, what are the values that are passed to the server? Both. Both test and server. But why it is displaying only one? Is it overriding? If it is overriding, then it will it should give the latest one, Sharad. Is it overriding? No. It will give the first one. Okay. Uh, now, if I ask a question, can a request parameter have multiple values? No. Hmm? No. no. It's the same, right? What is the name of the request parameter? Username. Is it having multiple values? Yes. Yes. A request parameter can have multiple values. But it is displaying only one. It's displaying in it's not my question. Okay. Is it displaying multiple request parameter values? Is not my question. My question is, can a request parameter have can the same request parameter have multiple values? Yes. yes. Here the username is having two values. One value is Sherat, sorry test, another value is Sherat. And here but why here only one value is displayed means you see here the request dot get parameter what is the written, uh, written type it's a string so it will display it, it can return maximum only one string value so the request par dot get parameter method will what it will do means it will take the first value first request parameter value and it will return one. let's consider that I have done this intentionally I have done this intentionally I want both the values I have done this intentionally and I have uh, I, I need to have both the values then what I can do understand my point I have I have placed two fields with the same name intentionally and I need to get the both values I need to access or I need to get both the values in this survey what I can do Okay, then for that purpose, okay, we have another method request dot get parameter values. Okay, request dot get parameter values method will be used. Okay, if in if you think that 
there will be multiple values for the same request parameter okay if you think that there are multiple values for the same request parameter name okay then what we do is we execute the method get parameter values which will return a string array okay it will return a string array request dot get parameter values method will get written a string array okay so let me write a for loop and hence for loop You know the format of enhance for loop, right? Yes. It will print all the username values that we enter. Okay. So now there are two fields that corresponds to username. We want both the fields. Okay, both the uh, both the values. So I'm using request dot get parameter value. The same parameter can have multiple values. It's possible to have multiple values for the same request parameter that can be fetched all those values can be fetched using get parameter values method okay with the same request parameter but multiple values will come as a array Understand? okay this request dot get parameter values method should be used only when we think that there can be multiple values for the same request parameter okay if you think that there is only one value for a request parameter then we will definitely go for get parameter only we go for get parameter values only if we know that there will be multiple values for the same request parameter ok so let me try to compile st uh, stop the server ok I recompile the application I restart the server server is started ok let me go to test.html I will give test in the first field server in the next field or other in the third field this is a first one field so first value is coming the second value is coming as well as the password is also coming to the server. Understood? How we can get multiple values for the same request parameter if it is available? Okay. Now let's consider like if we don't enter any value. Okay. If we don't enter any value, directly we click on submit. Okay. Then what is the value entered here? Pardon? Only password we give no value for. No values for username. They will go as blank. Let me consider that I don't even enter the values for password. Password entered by this blank. Okay. That's how it will be. Okay. Now let me use the method as post. Rather than going for get, let me use the method as post. Let me use the method as post. Let me submit. Okay, even here. It is the same scenario. Okay, just the values will go as blank. 
sometimes for some of the uh, versions of Tomcat server, <laughs> the request parameter will go as null if you don't enter any request parameter. Okay, so most of the server versions what they will do is they will give the request parameter as null if you don't enter any request parameter. So either it may be null or blank. Okay, if it is not null and not blank, then only we should consider that there is some value in the request parameter. Okay. Then, okay. This is the basic uh, thing of the servlet. We'll uh, uh, from the browser we'll send some request to the server. Okay, it will go to the servlet as per the URL pattern, and in the servlet again we can send some information back to the browser. Whatever the information that we send from the browser to the servlet. We can access that through request object. Okay, and another method is there. With the let's consider like we have given some uh, request parameters and the corresponding values. We have some request parameters and corresponding values. Okay, from the browser, but we don't know the names of the request parameter. If we don't know the names of the request parameters. <laughs> Can we can we get them using get parameter or get parameter values? No, we don't know the request parameter name itself. Then we cannot use get parameter or get parameter values just because get parameter or get parameter values will definitely expect the request parameter name as an input. If we don't know the request parameter name, then we cannot go for this method. For that purpose, what we have is we have. get parameter map okay we have a get parameter map okay request dot get parameter map okay this will give a key value pairs key is the request parameter name value is the request parameter value okay key here it will be a string and value will be a string array key will be a string value will be a string array just because request parameter name is the key which will be a string request parameter value can be one or many so uh, can be even zero or many so string array can handle that so key is a string value is a string array okay key is a Request parameter name and value is the request parameter value. Okay, so then how we can create a map? We go for entry set. We will use this map dot entry. dot get key will return the key and get value will return the value okay entry dot get key will return the key and entry dot get value will return the value and let me make it the agenda okay 
map dot get uh, sorry map dot entry set method will return a uh, entry set okay it will contain a set of entry objects each and every entry object will have a key value pair so just i have given a entry object with a key value pair okay so just i am getting uh, each key value pair will uh, come in this for loop there are 10 key value pairs which uh, for loop will be executed for 10 times okay that's how it will be and map should be imported the server parameter because we have used connections it's not a big deal this let me try to start start the server let me try to send some values request parameter name is using now and the value is a string array request parameter name is password and value is a string array understand so if you want to get those values again we can print them using a for loop So what we are doing? Huh? So if you are not getting anywhere means just raise the question so that I can get you. So since it is a string array, you see not to print this content. I am writing a for loop. Understood? Huh? So let me try to stop this error. Mobile application. Restart the server. Let me come to the browser again and resubmit the. Values. So, for username, select and register the values. For password, one two three four is the value. Okay, understood. How uh, we can fetch the request parameter names and their values, even if we don't know the request parameter name. Okay, like this. Just there will be a get parameter map method, which will return a map of string and string array. Okay, string is is the key. String array is the value. Okay, 
a request parameter name and there can be multiple values for the same request parameter so by iterating them we can come to know understand but we have the knowledge how we can get the request parameters and how the response is sent back to the browser okay. we will discuss some more things about service okay. basically the servlet okay inheritance hierarchy will be in such a way that okay the supermost class for any servlet of any protocol okay will be a class name generic servlet generic servlet will be the supermost class for any servlet okay and this generic servlet will implement with three interfaces this generic servlet will implement with three interfaces servlet servlet config serializer okay generic servlet is an entity is a class which implements with three interfaces servlet servlet config and serializable serializable it is a marker interface we know that we just it will be useful or it will be used to enable the process of serialization for that entity okay and servlet config okay servlet config uh, is a interface present in javax.servlet package even servlet is a interface present in javax.servlet package let me show you you see if you want to know the uh, methods and, and the related attributes of any entity just go for java p space the entity name okay java x dot servlet dot servlet this is interface okay servlet is a interface okay and the servlet interface has some of the methods and even we have a servlet config java p space java x dot servlet dot servlet Servlet config is an interface. It has some uh, specific methods, and even we have, we are going to have a generic servlet. Java p dot Java x dot servlet dot generic servlet. Generic servlet. Okay. Is generic servlet a class or interface? It's a class. Is it class? Is it abstract class or a concrete class? Abstract. Abstract class. It is abstract class. And what are the interfaces that is implementing? What are the interfaces that generic servlet is implementing? Implements servlet, servlet config, and serializable. So, generic servlet is uh, extending to Java line that object. It's by default, but it is implementing with three interfaces: servlet, servlet config, serializable. Okay, why servlet uh, interface is used? Why servlet interface is used? The servlet interface, okay, will contain the lifecycle methods of the servlet. Okay. The servlet interface will contain the lifecycle methods of the servlet. Okay, so 
what are the life cycle the sun what is the importance of this sunlight interference okay first we will come by the inheritance hierarchy first sunlight sunlight conflict and sunlight conflict. then generic sunlight like that okay why sunlight interface is used the sunlight interface will have all the life cycle methods of the sunlight what are the life cycle methods of the sunlight okay, there are three methods that corresponds to the li life cycle of a sunlight okay those methods are in it okay in it service okay and destroy in it service destroy these three are the method that corresponds to the sunlight life cycle okay in it that are Life cycle methods of the sunlight are in it service and destroy. Okay, in it service and destroy. Okay, these methods are called by the sunlight. Sorry, by the server, by the web server. These methods of a sunlight are called by the web server, okay, at a specific stage, okay. In it will be called at one stage, service will be called at another stage, and the will be called at another stage. So these are three different stages in the life cycle of the sunlight, okay. Initialization, service execution, and destruction are three different stages in sunlight life cycle, okay. E at each and every stage, a specific method will be called. At one stage, init method will be called. At another stage, service method will be called. At another stage, destroy method will be called. We will discuss in depth when these methods will be called. But these three methods represent the three different stages of sunlight life cycle. Okay? So that they are those three methods present in the sunlight interface are called as life cycle methods of the sunlight. So the sunlight interface basically contains the life cycle methods of the sunlight. In addition to the life cycle methods, Okay, it contains some uh, miscellaneous methods like get sunlight info. Okay, it's not that much important. Okay, but the main uh, methods are init service and destroy. Okay, it has even a get sunlight config method also. Okay, what is a sunlight config and why a sunlight config is required that we will discuss later on. Just make it a reminder that there is a method even sunlight config in the sunlight interface. get select config will be there in the select interface okay these three are life cycle methods in addition to this life cycle methods we have get select config method in the select interface which is important but what is select config what select config will do that we will discuss later on is make it not like select interface has life cycle methods along the life cycle methods it has even get select config okay we should which also will be important, which is not a life cycle method. Get select config will not be a life cycle method, but it will be important for some other purpose that we will discuss later on. Okay, but make it not like get select config method will be there in select interface. Okay, next, what is next interface? Select config. Okay, select config. Now, let's see the select config. The select config okay. the select config will have these methods. Get select name, which is a miscellaneous method, the name of the select. Okay. And select context. Okay. And get init parameter and get in parameter names. These are the four methods present in the select config. Okay. We will see what is select config and why it is used. But make it a note like there is an interface with the name select config which the generic select will implement. Okay. And it has four methods. Get select name. Get select mean, name means the name of the select that we have configured in the web.xml. How we can get the name of the select that we have configured in the web.xml means using the method present in the select config interface. Get select name is the will return the name of the select 
that we have configured in the web dot xml okay and get select context will return a select context okay what is the select context that we will discuss later on okay and get init parameter will return the init parameter get init <coughs> parameter values will return the init parameter values so just these methods will be there in the select context so, sorry select config select config will have all these methods okay select config will have all these methods now is the serializable will have all these methods uh, will serializable interface have any methods are there any methods in serializable interface yes or no why since serializable is a marker interface marker interface will doesn't have any methods marker interface will not have any methods okay so serializable is interface that's why it doesn't have any method okay so so from serlet all these methods will come into generic serlet so ideally generic serlet contains all these methods generic serlet contains all these methods okay in it service destroy git select config okay and all these methods exist in index select just because Generic Serlet implements with Generic Serlet implements with both the interfaces Serlet and Serlet Config. So whatever the methods present in Serlet that will come to Generic Serlet, whatever the method present in Serlet Config, even those methods will come to Generic Serlet. So Generic Serlet will contain all those methods. Okay, among all these methods, except service, all the methods are implemented in Generic Serlet. You know what is implementation, right? from interfaces only abstract methods will come so since generic serlet is a class a class should implement those methods otherwise the class should be made as abstract so generic serlet implements all those methods except service method service method is a abstract method in generic serlet okay service method is a abstract method in generic serlet except service method okay except service method all the remaining methods are implemented in a generic serlet now is it possible to make a generic serlet as a concrete class no. no just because there is one abstract method service okay even if you see here there is a service method No, no, it's not. Okay, yeah. Here it is a, a service method where it is still abstract. Okay, so service method is still abstract in the generic servlet. For that reason, generic servlet is a abstract class. Just because if there is at least one abstract method in a class, then the class should be made as abstract. Okay, why generic servlet doesn't implement service method? Why generic servlet doesn't implement service method? means service method is supposed to have the protocol specific logic service method supposed to have a protocol specific handling logic or the protocol handling logic the protocol handling logic will be there in the service method now is this generic servlet specific to a protocol or generic to all the protocols specific to the specific protocols no HTTP servlet is specific to protocol, but this generic servlet is a servlet is a super class to all the servlets of all the protocols. Yes. If generic servlet is a super class to all the servlets of all the protocols, 
Is it specific to a protocol or is, is, is it generic to all the protocols? See, generic surlet is a super class to any surlet of any protocol. It might be FTP protocol, it might be HTTP protocol, or it might be XYZ protocol, or whatever the protocol it might be. Generic surlet is a super class for all the surlets of all the protocols. Now, can I say generic surlet as specific to HTTP protocol or is it, is it generic to any all the protocols? Since it is generic to all the protocols, okay, can we write HTTP uh, protocol specific logic in service method of generic surlet? No. Can we write FTP specific logic in service method of generic surlet? No. Since service method is supposed to have the protocol handling logic, we cannot write the protocol handling logic in the generic surlet level. Just because it is generic to all the protocols. So, for that reason, service method is abstract in the generic surlet. And the generic surlet is extended by a specific protocol surlets. Let's consider like for HTTP protocol, we have HTTP surlet. This HTTP surlet will extend to generic surlet. HTTP surlet will extend to generic surlet. So, in HTTP surlet, again, service method is overriding. So, in HTTP surlet, okay, the HTTP surlet will be there in different package. Java X dot surlet, where it is? It is there in Java X dot surlet dot HTTP package. Okay? And this generic surlet will be there in, in a generic package. Java X dot surlet package. This entity, HTTP surlet, okay, it is specific to HTTP protocol. But this generic surlet is it's not so specific to HTTP protocol, it is generic to all the protocols. So for that reason, generic surlet service method doesn't have any implementation. Service method should be implemented with protocol specific logic, protocol handling logic. So the protocol information will be not be there in the generic surlet. It will be there at the specific surlet. Okay. Uh, so HTTP surlet is a surlet specific to HTTP protocol. So in the HTTP surlet, service method is overriding. Okay. And if you see the HTTP surlet. So, there are several methods present in the HTTP surlet class. Okay, let me. We see here among these HTTP surlet class methods, okay, it's in, it extends to generic surlet. HTTP surlet extends to generic surlet, okay. If you see here, see the last one is abstract is for HTTP surlet. After this, do we have any abstract? No. No. So, this HTTP select contains abstract methods? Yes. Yes? Yes. Where? What is the method? Just show me. Let me go for a separate file so that we can watch it better. 
Now this is my HTTP select class uh, corresponding methods. Okay. How many abstract methods are there? This abstract is there which is for the class. Yeah. No? Is there any other abstract? Volume. See. Is this a method? It's a class. It's for a class. Okay. Is there an abstract method in the HTTP select class? Mm -hmm. No. No. If there is no method in a class, okay, in which scenario we make the class as abstract? If there is, in general, what we do is, if there is abstract method in the class, sorry, if the abstract method is there in the class, then definitely we will make the class as abstract. In which scenario, in some scenario, what we will do is, will make the class as abstract even though there is no abstract method. In which scenario we will make that? To prevent uh, that class to implement. For that we will use final. To implement inheritance, to prevent the inheritance we use final. So, if you want to restrict the object creation for any class even though the class doesn't have any abstract methods we will make the class as abstract the only reason why we make the class as abstract even though it doesn't have any abstract methods means to prevent the object creation for the class okay there is no need for us to create the object for HTTP server so we have made an abstract class to prevent the object creation for HTTP server for that reason HTTP select is abstract. HTTP select is abstract not because of it is having abstract method. It doesn't have any abstract method. It is abstract just because we need to restrict the object creation for HTTP select. Just because it is not at all required to create a HTTP select object. Okay? So, most of the servlets that we develop will extend to HTTP select. Just because 99.99% scenarios we use HTTP servlet, HTTP protocol. So, we use HTTP protocol. <coughs> Understood? I'll show the hierarchy of servlet entities. The first, servlet, servlet config, serializable. These three are interfaces which will be implemented by generic servlet, which is generic to all the protocols. And we go for a HTTP servlet, which is specific to HTTP protocol. And generic servlet has one abstract method, servlet. Just because service method has a protocol handling logic, so since the protocol handling logic, protocol information will not be available in the generic servlet, which is common to all the protocols. Okay, for that reason, service method is abstract in generic servlet. So for that reason, since service method is abstract, since one abstract method is there in the generic servlet, generic servlet should be made as abstract. But the service method is overridden in HTTP servlet, even though HTTP servlet doesn't contain any abstract methods. To restrict object creation for HTTP servlet, it is made as abstract. For our login servlet, we will extend to HTTP servlet. Okay? Now, we told that the HTTP servlet service method contains the protocol handling logic. Okay? Now, if you override the uh, service method, will that protocol handling logic also override it? Yes. Is it a correct thing to do? No. no. So, s uh, since the protocol handling logic will be there in the service method of HTTP servlet class, we should not override the service method. Okay? We should not override the service method. So, what we can do? If we don't override the service method, where, we do, where do we write the business logic? In a separate class. Okay? Where we write the business logic means we have specific methods to write the business logic in okay. We have a method do post. We have two methods in HTTP servlet. One method is do get, another method is do post. Okay. We use do get method when uh, to write the business logic, okay. Do get and do post methods are already there in HTTP servlet. Do get and do post are already there in HTTP servlet. 
okay it's already there in http server okay what we do is just we override those methods we override do get and do post methods okay when we override do get method means when the method of form submission is get if the method of form submission is post then we override the do post method understand when the method of form submission is get then we override do get method when the method of form submission is post then we override do post method to write the business logic of the servlet we won't override the service method to write the business logic of the servlet we won't override service method to write the business logic of the servlet just because the servlet method is, spe is specific okay it's used to uh, handle the uh, it, it, it has the protocol handling logic so we should not override that method and we should not lose the protocol handling logic okay so what we do is we override either do get or do post based on the method of form submission if the method of form submission is get then we override do get if the method of form submission is post then we override do post method so now have a override do post method okay understood why we should override do get and do post in place of service method so let me try to save the application we close all these things okay just compile let me stop the server restart the server okay and let me do the same thing same uh, thing is happen even with do post also okay now what we'll do is we override the do get method we override the do get method when the form submission is post now the method of form submission is post but we have overrided the do get method okay then what it will how it will behave let us see i should what we have done we have overrided the do get method but the method of form submission is post it was compiled successful while executing let us see what happens okay let me give correct values what is the exception it is giving no, what, is, what is the error code 405 405 will become uh, sorry 405 error code will be raised okay when we submit the form using one method but we capture using another method in the servlet if we capture with uh, get the form submission also should be get in the servlet if we capture using post then the form submission also should be post if it is irrelated if you submit the form using get and capture using post then what happens it will be 405 okay which is which is here uh, which is something like form submission method is incompatible okay incompatible method of form submission okay with the servlet okay so it's either way if you submit using post and uh, override do get or if you submit using get and override do post it will give the same exception okay Let me consider that I'll override the service method. I 
overage service method and uh, I have overage given the two post method let me give it two post understood what I mean? Yeah. I have overage both service and two post methods ok now if I submit the form using method post where it will come? will it come to do post or will it come to service method? So what I have done? I have overrun both service and do post methods. I compile the application. I will start the server. I will try to execute this. Where it is coming? Post. Is it coming to the service method or is it coming to the do post method? If you see here, it is coming to do, do post. Okay. If both service and do post are overrided, okay, definitely it comes to do post. Now. Let's come consider that we are overriding the oh sorry we are submitting the form using get method. Okay. If we submit the form using get method, then where it will come? Where it is coming? now coming to the service method. If the browser was not refreshed, so it was a problem. So again, if you go to test.html, let me make the method as post. Okay. Let me refresh the browser and submit. Where it is going? It's going to do post. Okay, so if we use a specific method is overrided, then it will go for the specific method. Otherwise, it will go to the service, service method. Okay, but sorry, I have already do get right. Which one do get this service? We can both override do get and do post method also. Now I have overrided. Sorry. Earlier I have overridden uh, do get method. Okay. Now I am overriding both service and do post. Okay. It's a problem for me. Just let me start it from the beginning. Earlier it was a mistake that we have overridden do post in case of service. Now what I am doing is I am overriding service method as well as do post method. Okay. Now let me try to compile this. Let's compile. Let me try to execute the application. Let me go to this page. Let me refresh the page. Now, I have overridden both service and do post methods. Now, where it is going? It's going to the service method. Okay? Now, it's the correct thing. Okay, why it is going to the service method? Means the service method is the starting point of request handling logic. Now, is it going to the do post now? No. Why it is not going to do post now? Because 
okay uh, transferring the control to dupos okay that logic will be there in the service method of the http server since we have overrided that our service method will be called but in our service we are not transferring the call to dupos method understand so we should not override the service method in most of the cases not in most in any of the case we should not override the service method if you override the service method then unexpected results will come here it is expected to execute do post method but since we have overridden the service method this service method will be called and this service method will is not doing anything understood so service method is the starting point of request handling logic so whether it comes to do post or do get it will come only through service method that too it can come only through the service method of the http server class so we should not override the service method understand so if we don't override the service method then definitely it will come to the do post method only so better to decompile the application stop the server restart the server definitely it will come to the do post method just because now service method is there in the generic server and we have not override it and definitely it will come to the generic server and it comes to do post method yes sir so the service point uh, service method is the starting point of execution of a server business logic okay from there itself it will navigate to either do get or do post so we should not override the service method understood and how let's consider like if we create some request from the browser to the server okay if you create a request from the browser to the server okay what happens how the request handling will be done okay that we'll discuss that is nothing but the server life cycle okay how the request handling will be done okay how uh, when the request and response are created okay that will be like a server life cycle okay how the request handling will be done when we submit a request from the browser to the server okay when we submit a request from the browser to the server for the first time okay when we submit the request from the browser to the server for the first time okay what happens is this can select like from the from the server so from the browser we have entered username and password and clicked on submit so that is the first time that i am using that request okay this is the first time i am uh, requesting to the server or that is the first time i am sending a request to the server when a first request is sent to the server when a first request is sent to the server then what happens is a new server object is created the first step is first step in the server life cycle is new server object is created by by the web server server object creation and maintenance will be done by the web server okay web server will create and will maintain the server objects the first thing whenever we send a request let's consider like i am sending a request okay uh, to the uh, server okay so i have given the url pattern and the url pattern is recognized uh, by the web server in the web data xml and it is going to the it is finding when it finds the exact server a valid server then from that point of time the server life cycle starts let's consider like if i have given a wrong url pattern then the server life cycle will not be initiated server life cycle is initiated when a correct url pattern is there and a matching server that is there in the web data xml and for that matching server name a server class is configured and when a matching server class is found that means for that url pattern a server class is found then the control will should the control should go to the server at that point of time the server life cycle will begin okay so the web server then if the valid server class is found for the url pattern then the web server will create a object to the corresponding server class okay then once the server class 
object is once the object is created to that submit class okay then the second step is okay the servlet will create a servlet config object the web server will create a servlet config object okay servlet config object is a object which is specific to the servlet okay we can send 100 or 1000 requests to the servlet if we send 1000 requests to the servlet when in that scenario only one servlet config object will be there for servlet okay servlet config object is a servlet specific object okay will be only one to a servlet and this servlet config object will be used to represent servlet specific uh, parameters okay if you want to represent something uh, which is specific to servlet you want to represent any parameter or any value which is specific to a servlet then that will be there in the servlet config okay the first step is servlet uh, sorry object to a servlet class will be created second step is servlet config object is created all these things will be done by the server itself web server here the tomcat server and the third step is okay by passing by passing the select config object that present in test 2 step 2 okay what the web server will means web server will make a call to the init method okay web server will make a call to the init method is executed so first the object is created okay and the select config object is created and by passing the select config object that is created in the test uh, in the step 2 okay the init method of the select is, is executed in the first step we have created object let's consider like in the first step it will create the object in the second step it will create which is a anonymous using an some anonymous net class okay this will select config is interface okay and in the third step what it will do by passing this object by passing the object created in the second step okay it will execute the init method of this select object will execute the init method of this select object by passing the understand see first object will be created for the select that select object's init method will be executed okay in the third step understand what init method will do what is the logic present in the init method means in the init method okay all the init parameters are populated into servlet config object okay what are init parameters means the parameters that are specific to a servlet the parameters that are specific to a servlet are called as init parameters the parameters that are specific to a request are called as request parameters in the same way the parameters that are generic to all the requests but specific to that servlet are called a servlet can contain 1000 requests let's consider like a servlet is a login servlet okay we cannot expect that only one user should log in 1000 users may log into the same servlet if 1000 users are logged into the same servlet 1000 requests will be there but for that login servlet there will be only one set of init parameters okay that init parameters will be loaded into the servlet config object through init method Understood? Init method through init method we load all the init parameter into select config object. Okay, that will be done by the web server. Okay, that's the second step. Sorry, that's the third step. First step is a new object to select will be created. In the second step, select config object will be created. In the third step, 
the first life cycle method in it will be executed by passing the select config object created in the second stage okay and what init method will do means it will dump all the init parameters into the select config object okay and in next step request and response object are created HTTP solid request and HTTP solid response objects are created. HTTP solid requests and response objects are interfaces. Uh, how objects are created means internally an anonymous net class will be used. Okay? Okay? And HTTP solid requests and response objects are created. Okay? And in the same way, after creating HTTP solid requests and response objects, all the request parameters. or jump into request object next step all the request parameters are dumped into the <coughs> request object okay this will be done even by, by the web server itself okay once the request and response objects are ready request object is created response object is created and all the request object parameters are dumped into the request object and once this is done then in the next step okay the web server will create a thread web server will create a thread the purpose of the thread is to execute service method the purpose of the thread is to execute the service method by passing the request object and response object that are created in the above step. In the fourth step we have created request and response object. That request and response objects are passed to call the service method. Just because the service method will take two arguments. One is request, second is response. Okay? And the thread the purpose of the thread is to execute the service method. Okay? And the service method is the execution is a multi-threading mechanism. If there are thousand requests, let's consider like if there is a Gmail application. Uh, Gmail application is being accessed by let's consider like thousand users at the time. Are those thousand users uh, accessing uh, the same Gmail application at the same time or could they uh, able to log in at the same time or will it be a one after another process? At the same time, multiple users could be able to access the same application multiple users could be able to log in at the same time how it happens means since it is a multi-threaded mechanism okay, the request handling in any technology is a multi-threaded mechanism just because multiple requests should be handled by the same uh, same web resource a web resource if it is a web resource that web resource should be in a position to handle multiple requests at the same time in java that is multiple requests at the same time, multiple tasks at the same time will be handled by threads. So, request handling in Java it is a multi threaded mechanism. So, for each and every request, a thread will be created. And that thread will execute the service method by passing the request and response. And in the service, okay, if the method of form submission is get, then do get will be. The method of form submission is post, then do post will be executed. Okay, understood? That's how uh, once the service method execution is completed, then the purpose of the thread is over and the thread will be filled. This is for the first request. Okay, now let's consider like uh, again another request has come to the same server. A second, uh, second request has come to the server. Okay. Then what happens is all these steps will not happen. These steps will not happen. Okay. If there are thousand requests to the same select, okay, only one select object will be created. 
only one init method will be uh, executed and only one select config object will be created okay but the request and response objects are different for different uh, requests okay and the threads to service method also will be different again if it is for the if this is for the first request one two three four five six will be executed will be done will be processed but if it is a second request okay then what happens is it will come from the fourth step okay select object will not be created for the second request select config object will not be created init method will not be executed for the second request for the second request directly a request and response objects are created specific to that request okay and uh, request parameters are done specific to that request and a thread will be created specific to that request and service method will be executed that's it now if i may uh, if i send some thousand requests to the same server how many times init method is executed only once, only once. how many times a server object is created only once. how many times init parameters are loaded once how many times a select config object is created once. how many times how many threads to service method will be created 100, 100. how many times the service method is executed how many times service method is executed? 100 times. If we uh, create 100 thread, if we send 100 requests, 100 times service method will be created, 100 threads to service method will be created, and 100 times either do, do get or do post will be executed. Understand? That's how uh, the select life cycle will be. And the last step will be a destruction step. When the select will be destroyed. Okay? The select is destroyed when uh, the select is kept ideal for some specific span of time. Okay? If the select uh, is kept ideal, if you are not sending any request to that select for a spe specific span of time, what the web server will do means the web server will destroy that select. Okay? If the select is not used for uh, 5 or 10 minutes, it's, no, uh, it's of no use to get the select. And Serlet will destroy the serlet. While destroying the serlet, it will call the before this. Sorry, not while before destroying the serlet. Before destroying the serlet, the serlet will execute the destroy method. Sorry, the web server will execute the destroy method of the serlet. Web server will execute the destroy method of the serlet before destroying the serlet. Okay, so that we can clean up any resources if required. Okay. Do get uh, init method is for initialization. So, uh, if some resources are required for that select, we will open the resources in the init method. If any resources wants to be closed, we close them in the destroy method. If there is any business logic, the business logic will be executed in the do get or do post method. Understand the purpose of the lifecycle method? Okay. Then, if it, if any resources are supposed to be closed, then those resources will be closed in the destroy method. Okay, something like destruction logic will be written in the destroy method, and destroy method uh, will be executed by the web server whenever before destroying the server. That doesn't mean that whenever we execute the destroy method, server will not be destroyed. Yes, we can even call the destroy method manually through the code. When we call the destroy method, the select will not be destroyed. When the select is destroyed, before destroying the select, the web server will call the destroy method. That doesn't mean that when we call the destroy method through the code, then the select is destroyed. When we call the destroy method through the code, the select will not be destroyed. When we call the destroy method, uh, sorry, when the, uh, uh, when the web server calls the destroy method, then only it's an indication that the select is going to be destroy okay the destroy method doesn't contain any logic to destroy the servlet destroy method doesn't contain logic to destroy the servlet when the servlet is going to be destroyed if we want to execute any closing or any shutdown kind of logic that logic will be written in the destroy method destroy method doesn't contain any logic to destroy the servlet when the servlet is going to be destroyed, if some logic specific to that servlet should be executed, then destroy method will be executed. Understand? Most of the people will think that 
destroy method will contain the logic to uh, destroy the cell life. Whenever the destroy method is executed, then itself the cell life will be destroyed. But it's not the correct assumption. The correct thing is the destroy cell uh, sorry, destroy method of a cell life will be executed by the web server before destroying the cell life. Destruction of the web server or destroying the web server, sorry, de destroying the cell life will be definitely done by the web server. It cannot be done by us. We cannot destroy the cell life. Destroying the cell life will be done by the web server itself. Before destroying the uh, cell life by the web server, the web server will make a call to the destroy method so that it can clean up any resources that are open. No, sir? But many of the people will think it in a wrong assumption, in a wrong way. That they will assume that whenever we call destroy method of the cell life, the cell life will be destroyed. But it's not the correct assumption. Okay? Destroy the cell life destruction or initialization will be done only by the web server. We cannot handle that. Okay? When the web server is going to destroy the cell life, then itself we it will call the destroy method. But if we call the destroy method through the code, then it will not destroy the cell life. Understood? That's how it will be. Okay? We see in the next session, we'll see how this init and destroy and do get and do post will work more practically. Okay?